All right, so we are back. Your boy's back from BKFC last night. Was crazy. Shout out all the people over there. Mike Perry, the king of violence. I'm having a blast doing commentary. I'm hoping to do a lot more this year. Honestly, hoping to make it a full-time thing. But today we're talking about another fight that happened in the influencer boxing scene almost two months ago. I know you guys are tired of talking about it, but I have to keep you updated with what's happening in this scene even though there's not a lot happening in this scene. and tomorrow we're gonna go over the brian garcia and oscar duarte fight so don't worry we're coming back with some actual pro boxing as well but today we're talking about mr knowledge strength and i can't believe we're still talking about the tommy fury fight that's right ksi just made his return to youtube and he wants to get some things off his chest regarding his fight with tommy fury and what went down, how he feels about it, and I think he deserves that opportunity. And he's going to give us his rundown on what happened in the fight, how he feels about it, and what should be done. Even though we already have info as to what has been done regarding this appeal for the Tommy Fury fight, and recent info has told us that JJ's already lost the appeal. Or has he? The breakdown... Let's go. All right, so like I said, before we get into the JJ video, he's already lost this appeal with Tommy Fury. I mean, I have the statement here from the Professional Boxing Association, the commission tasked with overseeing this event. They said, the BBA confirms that an independent review panel consisting of two of the country's leading King's Council and a third lawyer, good God, we're using a King's Council for influencer boxing. As of right now, it says, the BBA has determined that there are no grounds to overturn the KSI versus Tommy Fury fight result from October 14th, 2023. We have been doing this for almost two months, and apparently it didn't stop there. And this is what I'm not understanding about this whole appeals process. One, I told you guys from the start I did not think this would be overturned because boxing is such a subjective sport. And with the judges ruling a unanimous decision for Tommy Fury, it was never, in my opinion, going to be something you could completely overturn. And I'm not saying this is a great thing, that boxing's judging is as shit as it is. It's absolute, complete and utter, barn stable, hay on the floor, horse shit. It's just what it is because this sport is so subjective. So even with that said from the PBA, Mams Taylor said this, the appeals process against the result of KSI's contest with Tommy Fury at the Prime Card in Manchester October 14th is ongoing. This is a day before they came out and said that there was no evidence to overturn it, which is why I'm confused as to what's happening. Again, KSI's manager, Mams Taylor, if you guys don't know, then said, we will now move to the second of three possible stages for the appeal as we continue to fight to have the decision of the bout rightly overturned. And then a, a Twitter called Sidemen Updates tweeted again at Mams and said, so the PBA tweet is misleading. He said, well, their tweet is not painting the entire picture at all. The only thing I can think of here is that this two or three step process of appeals means that KSI, his team, Mams Taylor are looking to appeal different parts of this fight. Like for the first one that I guess got rejected, they probably went to the PBA and said, we feel this fight should be overturned to a KSI win. Here's why. And presented their evidence. Doesn't look like it did anything. Step two and three is probably just a different way of appealing, whether they want to say KSI won, a draw, something else. But here's my point. In all of this, no one at this point cares. And I don't mean that to sound harsh because I, I do know the one person or the, the, the group that cares is KSI. It is the most important group of the people. He was the one in the fight. I get all that. But my question is why? are we appealing? But if it's just for KSI to, and again, rightfully so, feel like his victory is now solidified, okay, that's great. But what does it do for this scene? Does it make KSI's win or loss, draw, whatever you want to call it, feel like it would have in that moment? And if you're asking my personal opinion on it, all it really looks like, if this thing is to be overturned to the public, I'm not saying this is the case, but what it'll look like is, oh, well, KSI just went and had his promotion company complain to the people that judge their events and they caved because they want to judge more misfits again i don't think that's the case at all i'm just giving you the optics of what people will say should this thing get overturned three months potentially four months down the line and the biggest overarching factor of this whole thing those same people influencer boxing fans ksi fans the actual truth of this whole situation for them again it's not about them necessarily it's about ksi how he feels about the fight and what he thinks is right that's fine but they don't care we don't care. We saw with our eyes the performance JJ put on that night. It shocked me. I said it on the night and I stuck with it. This fight should have been a draw. So again, this whole idea of overturning the win doesn't mean a lot to me because I've already seen what I need to see. I've already been hyped up for the Jake fight based on, again, what I've seen from JJ. This was the big thing in my head that I think a lot of us wanted to look at and say, can that fight be competitive? Can JJ and Jake fight 
and really it be a flip of the coin toss up. And I think it can be. And that performance convinced a lot of people, including myself, that that still is the fight we want. Let's take a look and see what he had to say and where he's at regarding this whole appeals process, his influencer boxing future, the fight, or just how he's taken the loss. First of all, quite frankly, I just didn't feel like making a video, <laughs> especially after the result of the Tommy Fury fight. I had trained so hard these past few months, you know, working overtime to do what most people saw was impossible. And that was to beat Tommy Fury. I felt like I had won the fight. So to have the judges completely take that moment away from me. Yeah, it, <laughs> it sucked as soon as I got back home. So yeah, you can, I mean, right here, you already see how JJ's attitude is about the fight. He's still at this point, And again, rightfully so, if this is the way he feels, he still feels like the judges took that from him. And knowing the competitor that JJ is, this is going to eat at him for a while. And that could honestly be a good thing for him influencer boxing going forward because again it's gonna sound a little weird the way i say it but it may give him a reason to come back if that makes sense like if he would have beaten tommy fury he probably could have and, and would have rode off into the sunset being like i don't need to do the jake fight i beat the guy that beat jake the whole thing he was talking about beforehand but again you guys know this just as well as i do the competitor that he is this is why he's not taking this loss so well and quite frankly we'll get into it in a second but i don't know how many losses jj's ever had like you're looking at a guy that just hasn't lost in his career. But this attitude that he has as far as like still feeling like this, holding that still here. And you can tell just the way he's talking, it's, it's affecting him even now. Depending on what path he chooses forward, I have a feeling it's going to give him an itch to come back and try to right the wrong and get that bad taste out of his mouth. It's crazy because so many people felt like I won the fight. From Eddie Hearn to you know Adesanya to Ariel Hawani to the millions all over the internet, you know, that thought I'd won the fight. Even my biggest hater, <laughs> Jake Paul, uh, before the announcement was made, thought I won the fight. Yo, is this real? Straight trash. That wasn't boxing, only wins on a point deduction. Neither man even knocked down. Did Jake actually tweet that? <laughs> if he actually tweeted that, that's something that JJ should never let him live down because i didn't know this i didn't even know this like this tweet existed so it took me a while to process you know all of that yes i was still doing sidemen videos after the fight i was still doing prime stuff after the fight but underneath all of that i was still mentally battling the whole situation another reason why it took me so long was because i don't think jj's done battling this situation mentally again i told you guys a second ago this is a guy that's never lost i don't remember him losing maybe he lost like in the sidemen battle music beef back in the day but as a creator as a professional in every venture that ksi has put his mind to he has been successful whether that's the side men his own personal channel music boxing he has won for example i've never lost on this level most of us never will get to this level to lose or win on but it. most of us just in our daily lives have failed multiple times at things, right? Depending on your career choice, you've probably failed and then succeeded a little bit and then failed again and succeeded. JJ has almost always succeeded. So you're seeing, at least on this stage, in a, in a way that no one else can really relate to, him deal with failure. This is why guys like Jake even, after the Tommy fight, they, they have to find ways to mentally process these things because they are so used to winning that when they don't, it is a little bit of a shock to him. Me and my team put up a case uh, to the PBA to explain why I didn't lose that fight. From Tommy Fury hitting me repeatedly in the back of the head. I will say this. I know people are not going to like that I said this. But yes, Tommy hit JJ in the back of the head more than JJ hit Tommy in the back of the head. But they were both doing. And also the point deduction, etc. I was just waiting for the result of the appeal. But it seems uh, <laughs> to be taking way longer than I thought it would. So I just decided now was a good time to post a video and lastly i just want before he goes on i maybe he recorded this before the pba put that tweet out or is it just this weird thing where there's this complete lack of communication as to what's happening with this appeal because again I, maybe i'm missing something but that tweet from the pba looked really specific as to what their stance was on overturning this fight <laughs> i have no idea what's going to come down the line i have no idea so how do i feel depressed <laughs> i hate my life <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I, I feel much, much better now. In terms of the Tommy... I think, again, there's a little bit of truth in jokes, right? There's a little bit of truth in mm. laughing off the situation. I, I don't think he's... JJ's not a guy that can laugh this thing off. And obviously, like I said, he's got a great life. He's able to now go travel, take some time off, be with his family, be with his, his significant other, all that. But again... 
right here. That shit's going to stick in his heart, man. I know it is. And I'm not saying that to be like, oh, ha ha. I'm saying like, good. And I'm saying good. Let it fuel JJ to, to, to come back. And if he wants to, I don't know that he does, but if he wants to, there's not a motherfucker out there with a mindset like he does to come back and figure that shit out once again. I don't know if it's with Tommy, with Jake, whoever. But again, the greats have it. That mama mentality that, that I got to get that get back. I still think that's burning in his heart. Yeah, I feel like I've come out better. <laughs> Way better than he has. Like, I'd much rather be in my position than Fair. his. I mean, it's nice to know that my fight with Tommy Fury will be the biggest fight he will ever have in his life. <laughs> Even if he fights anyone else, no one is going to care. <laughs> I mean, he claims to be at a world level, but he's out here trying to fight a 54-year-old Roy Jones Jr. It's, a, it's, a, it's honestly so shameful. <laughs> I mean, listen, I agree with that. Tommy is in no way world level. He is in no way a world title contender or aspiration have her at this point like if you're having life and death with jake paul and ksi the only belt you should be going near is the fucking walk-in closet that both those guys paid for because they got you racks that you would have never got at the highest level in boxing and while the talking was world class right he had a world class mouth ayo the skills are youtube boxing level so again when he's putting on his dress pants and he's going out for a night with the fury fam that's the only time i want to hear tommy talking about belts from now on and to be honest Tommy Fury has been pretty embarrassing these past few weeks. From him being with Chris Brown, having zero rhythm, <laughs> looking hella awkward, to him attempting to dance with Dion Wayne, to whatever this clip is, all while Molly May is looking after his kid at home. Okay, buddy, we going there with it. Maybe he's not done with Tommy Fury. She. Now, I will agree. Tommy is too left feet. It looks like there's another individual inside of his body trying to operate him, but the proportions are all off. So it's like too much is going into the arms and back and not enough into the legs and feet. But to be honest, I'd probably look the same way dancing. The man's still on stage with Chris Brown and whoever the fuck else that was. That doesn't seem like too much of an L. Seems like he's enjoying but it. But then KSI goes after him for whatever, again, in his words, this was. Well, this clip is. Tommy Fury spotted at a club with a girl i mean come on tommy you're you're a father now you can't be constantly partying in the club while your missus is taking care of your child you were hardly around during molly may's pregnancy and it seems that even after the child has been born you're hardly around Bl Ooh. Wait. Now again, I'm pretty sure Jake and Tommy were about to fight while Molly Mae was pregnant, so he was trying to train for that fight, and I guess in some way, I don't, listen, I have no idea the personal dealings of Tommy Fury on a daily basis. I'm not going to sit here and accuse the man. I don't know what he's doing in the public sphere with other women or whatever, or what he's got going on in his private life. JJ taking a personal shot there at, at, his, at his wife and his family situation. I'm never a big fan of doing all that stuff. It's a little weird to me. But again... JJ, I guess, trying to talk his shit here. And, and the only reason I would say that JJ would do this is if he wants to fight Tommy again. Like, like you start going personal and questioning the man's fathering skills and his relationship. I, I think that's probably where you, you, you're trying to set up the second one, I would assume, right? I, I don't know. So, yeah, let's keep reminding Tommy that he didn't win that fight under his Instagram post or Twitter post or anything he posts what? online. And if you see him publicly, you, you could berate him as well <laughs> and remind him that he didn't win. <laughs> But ultimately, I set out what I wanted to achieve. That's kind of whack. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. That's stupid. Yo, my community, go and like tweet to Tommy. That's that's stupid, bro. Like if, if JJ would have won, I guess, you know, but like publicly berate the guy. All right. See, the more that JJ does stuff like that, and, I, and I'm not saying that this is going to be something he continues doing, but we're about two months out of this thing. This is his first video back. I understand that. But to tell the people to go like berate Tommy and like go to his Twitter and his, and his Instagram and remind him that he didn't win, that part specifically does come off like a little bit of sour grape because that has nothing to do with JJ's own internal feeling about winning. That's more so, hey, go tell the other guy that competed that he didn't win because he's claiming the victory that all three judges gave him. You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't make a lot of sense. If JJ wanted to go and tweet at Tommy and say that, cool, but like to go send the fans to do it, that to me comes off like grasping at straws a bit to be like, yeah, fans, go tell him. You, you, like Tommy gives a shit about none of that. You know, I posted on my Instagram uh, saying this. I appreciate all the kind messages from everyone. In the ring and watching it back, I feel like I should have won. Either way, I feel like I accomplished what I wanted to in the end. This little untalented nerd was able to go toe to toe with a professional boxer. Use me as the living proof that hard work and self-belief can get you anywhere in this life. And you know, I portrayed this for years that message by the way was a w that message to the fans is exactly why people want to get behind you so regardless of what happens with this appeals process regardless what jj does with the whole trolling of tommy fury going forward 
The main message is what it always was after the fight. JJ's performance was surprising. It stood out. It was great. He did what a lot of people, including myself, did not think he was going to do. Now, at the very end of this point is where he and his team and some people on the other side are going to disagree. It's the ultimate charge of what is going to come out of this entire situation. JJ and his team are not going to be satisfied unless they get this appeal won, which again, I'll preface, which is stupid that I have to do, no offense to anyone, I just don't think is going to happen. And we're already on month two of this thing, three or four months now down the road, is anyone going to care? Will it really make a difference in this scene? I truly don't have those answers. Regardless, the point of my video was to show you guys that yes, JJ did something that he should not have been able to do, which is the overarching message I think even he wants to send you guys, that. Like he said, hard work, consistently dedication, you can do anything, and whether the judges agreed with that or not, he proved that. And I don't know that he even grasps that yet, or maybe he won't ever, because the greats usually never do. Because to them, the people at the top, it's the old Ricky Bobby quote, you're either first or you're last. Is that JJ's last fight? Is this the end for the Nightmare KSI? Personally, I think that loss and the fire that burns over it will be the thing that brings him back. But you never know, 2024, a brand new year for influencer boxing. So, guess we'll find out.